So I've cleaned off both of these gel plates with water, then ethanol, and then water again. And now I'm going to assemble, it, assemble the two plates so that I'm ready to pour the gel. So here at the bottom I put a stack of two sheets of thick filter paper. So two of them are just about the same thickness as the bottom of our spacers. And, and I've cut it so that they're um, just the width of the, of the plate. Now I'm going to actually put the spacers down and you want them right up against the top of the filter paper. Second spacer. And the spacers, of course, have also been cleaned. Okay, so that's good now. So now the top plate. To get it on cleanly, you really have to hold it right at the edges so that you don't move the spacers more than necessary when it goes down. Alright, now that that's there, I'm just going to readjust the spacers so that they're once again right on, right up against the filter paper, because they inevitably move a little bit while you're putting the top plate down. Alright, so now I've got that nicely set up. top of the side because I'm going to tape the bottom, but I did put a clamp down here first because the top plate is treated with Rain-X so that the gel won't stick to it very much, and that makes it really slippery, and I found that if I put the clamp on the side first, sometimes the top plate just slides all over the place, so I just used the one on the bottom initially to keep the top plate in place, but now I'm done with it. So now it's time to tape the bottom of the gel, and and this is very important, as you might expect, for preventing the gel from leaking while it's, while it's setting. So there is a little bit of an art to taping, and so what you want to do is get enough tape to reach about a third to halfway up the sides. And then you're going to put two pieces of tape on in total. This first one we're going to put so that about 70% of the extra width is on top and only about 30% is on the bottom, so just about like that. Okay, and then we can seal it along the bottom. And I'm going to seal it up the side now, trying to keep that same 70 to 30 ratio. Get it lying flat on there. Same thing on this side. And now we need to get it folded over the top and bottom with as few wrinkles as possible. So I start in the middle, and then the best way to avoid wrinkles is to go side by side and press it toward the part that's already sealed. You can see how I'm doing that. And then in the corner, fold it like how your mother showed you to fold your bed sheets, So that it lies nice and flat. Same thing on the other side. Tightly folded corner. So you can see that there are almost no, no wrinkles along where I just folded it. And so now we need to fold the thinner side. So you can just flip the gel over like that. And do the same thing over here. It's a little bit trickier to fold the corners with the thinner side, but if you practiced on your bed as a kid, it'll be no problem. And then I'm going to repeat with the second piece of tape, but with the thicker side on what is now the top, and the thinner side on the other side. So you'll end up with two pieces of tape with each one um, with a thicker side on both faces. Okay, so now we're ready to pour the gel. I have here 125 milliliters of gel solution, which is about the right um, amount for that size and thickness of the spacers we have. And I'm going to add to it 333 microliters of 10% APS. And before 
were using it, um, I made a big batch of this gel solution and I filtered it through a uh, bottle top vacuum filter. And this is something that I found makes a big difference for uh, how the gel eventually turns out. So if there are any particulates in it, your sample tends to get stuck on them while the, while the gel runs. And then you end up with a big smear. my gel taped and clamped and a 60 milliliter syringe to load it with. And I've also checked that the top clamps are far enough down that the comb will still fit in. Once the comb is in, we'll clamp the very top. So the most difficult part when you're pouring the gel is avoiding bubbles. Since the gel is so thin, um, it tends to get stuck on any imperfections in the glass. And so what I found really makes a big difference with this is just to tap it every so often while you're loading. That just helps to knock the gel solution away from whatever imperfections it's getting stuck on. And if you do get a bubble, you can tilt the gel vertical until the liquid falls below the level of the bubble. And then if you smack it a bunch of times, it will just pop. Yeah, and the filter paper at the bottom of the gel is... Essentially, it'll get soaked with gel material while I'm, pour when I'll, while I'm pouring it, and then it'll get soaked with buffer while the gel is running. So it's just a way to ensure a really a, a good continuous contact between the gel and the buffer, and also um, to have the gel a bit separated from the tape when you take it off. It's also typically the hottest part, correct? Yes. Yeah, the filter paper retains a significant amount of the of the P32, so you don't end up with a huge quantity of buffer that's really hot. You can see that the gel is getting stuck a little bit further down over here, so I'm just going to tap over there more to help it get unstuck. And the whole time I'm watching for bubbles in the area that the gel has already filled up. to especially try to get this spot right where it's filling out. You can see it's getting wider as I tap it. And that's good because it's not going to pinch off and form a bubble right there. So just a couple things that I've found go a long way toward getting better resolution with the gels, so I've certainly found that filtering the gel solution helps, both in terms of getting better resolution and in terms of avoiding um, your sample getting hung up on particulate matter in the gel and just smearing out the rest of the time while it runs. And one thing that I learned that was surprising because it's it goes counter to everything that I read is that I actually get better resolution if I leave the samples in the well for just a minute or so after loading them. So prevailing wisdom says that you should load and start as fast as you can, which makes sense because you'd 
because your sample will diffuse away eventually. But what I found has a bigger impact on my resolution is the small tail of sample that, um, so when you load, most of the sample goes to the bottom of the well, but you get a small tail still sitting vertically in the well. And if you give just, just a minute or so after loading for that tail to sink to the bottom, then for me the resolution ends up being much higher. Alright, so now I'm all the way to the top of the plates, and loading the, uh, putting the comb into these really thin gels, you have to, it's much more difficult to avoid air bubbles than with a regular gel, so I'm going to put quite a bit of gel solution above the top of the, um, of the shorter plate. Now I'm going to take out the, um, taller tube rack and put in this, this really short one just to keep it at a, a tiny bit tilted while it's setting. Okay. Alright, now to put the comb in. So I'm going to make sure there's plenty of gel solution there, and I have plenty ready to go. And then unlike with a thicker gel where you can just stick the comb right in, it's a good idea to lay it in the gel and then um, cover it with, with more liquid and then slide it in. If you don't do the additional covering step, you can the air that's in between the combs at the beginning can end up inside the gel. Okay, so now I'm just checking that it's set in there at the position I want it to be, which it is now, and now I can put the top clamps on. And, and all of these clamps are sitting on top of the spacers, not on top of the glass. And this is important so that the um, glass retains the exact shape it's going to be in once you take the clamps off. All right, and now I'm just making sure that the entire um, that the entire width of the gel, the comb is covered covered with liquid, and then we're good to go. It takes about an hour for these to set, and I'm just going to check back every ten minutes or so to make sure that the comb is still covered with liquid.